Hello, and it is time to talk about my lumpectomy surgery experience that I had. So I had my lumpectomy with the lymph node removal on my right breast back in February of 2023. So that is about five months ago. So that is about five months ago. And now I am far removed from that experience to now be able to talk about it because let me tell you it was a wild ride okay so leading up to my surgery it was rough because number one i had just been diagnosed with breast cancer and that kind of flipped a bunch of stuff in my life over number two i was also going through um genetic testing to make sure that I didn't test positive for BRCA1, BRCA2, or any other gene mutations. The results were not coming in time for that genetic testing. And my surgeon wanted to make sure that I had that those results in time for my surgery so that I can make a decision to either do a mastectomy or to do a lumpectomy. So a mastectomy, if you don't know, is when they remove both of your breast. A lumpectomy is when they do uh, partial part of your breast. It is also called breast conserving surgery. I actually ended up getting my genetic testing results the day before my scheduled surgery date. So I didn't test positive for BRCA1 or BRCA2, but I did test positive for a CHECK2 gene mutation. Having that information in my hands frightened me. It shocked me shocked me because I just didn't understand how I tested positive. I mean, there's not really family history of, you know, breast cancer in my family. And typically when there's a gene mutation, it means that either a mother or the father carries that gene. And thank God none of my parents, you know, have had any cancers. Um, but I have not yet received their results to see if they are carrying the gene or not. Um, even though I tested positive for the CHECK2 gene mutation, I did not feel confident or comfortable enough to go through with a mastectomy, having so little time to process my results. So I talked to my surgeon and I told him, you know, if I can just opt for the smaller surgery and then possibly in the future revisit the idea of, you know, going through a mastectomy. He agreed with me and he said that, you know, he didn't want me to feel pressured to do such a huge surgery with so little notice. So he said that that was a great idea. And yeah, so we went through with the smaller surgery, signed off on it. And like I said, I received my results the day before my scheduled surgery. So that means that the following day, I went in for my lumpectomy with the lymph node removal, as well as them installing my chemo port. So surgery day is here. Um, you know, prior to my surgery, the surgeon did discuss some of the possible things that could go wrong with surgery. Um, unfortunately, one of those things that he said was a risk actually ended up happening to me. So let me jump into that. So once I went in for my surgery, anesthesia kicked in, boom, I was out, woke up. And I remember waking up in pain and not being able to breathe. So immediately I knew something had gone wrong. I just didn't know what. So they ended up doing a chest x-ray and they discovered that I had like liquid at that time. I don't think they knew that it was blood actually starting to line my lung. And that is what was causing the difficulty in me breathing. So what was supposed to be a quick surgery, go in, boom, get out and leave that same day, ended up turning into a whole week at the hospital. So they told me that I was not gonna be going home, that I was actually gonna be staying the night and that they were gonna to try to figure out what basically was happening in my body. So got moved to a room, they did more tests, more x-rays. Turns out that when the surgeon installed my chemo port, 
he went a little too far and ended up puncturing one of the veins and that vein was just bleeding like crazy and my lung was getting pushed up and squished and it was very becoming very hard to breathe so basically i got a partially collapsed lung from the surgery from the installation of the port so my lumpectomy with the lymph node removal that all was fine it was just this that was the issue i had a buildup of blood lining my lung and it was difficult to breathe so that meant that they could either put me in through another surgery and try to fix the issue or number two they can insert a chest tube and try to drain the blood that way. They opted for option number two just because I already had two surgeries and they just did not want to put me back on the operating table. So chest tube it was. And let me tell you, if you've never had a chest tube, I do not wish it upon my worst enemy. That was the most painful thing I have ever gone through and I am a person who is typically pretty composed especially in the medical setting I am not one to really cause a commotion or anything like that I try to just hold myself together but when they inserted that chest tube in my chest they do it through the back I actually yelled from the pain and I don't do that, okay, in the medical setting. But it was so painful that I, I just, I couldn't hold it in. So, yeah, chest tube. Very, very painful and probably one of the most traumatic things I've gone through. That whole week in general at the hospital was pretty, pretty dark, pretty traumatic. And um, it was just really hard. I went through so many emotions. I was going through anger, frustration, anxiety. There was times where I felt like I was losing hope. I just was a mess. There were times as well, though, that I had peace, that I had comfort, that I had joy. We had so many family members, friends, visit us, shower us with gifts, with love, with prayers. And that's literally what kept me sane because that week in the hospital was so, so incredibly difficult. By day six, they were able to drain out enough blood for me to be able to go home. Coming home was really nice. My husband had a sweet surprise. I mean, he had put pink lights and he got a yard sign for me. He had balloons. It was just a, such a beautiful little touch of love that he he provided for me, you know, coming home after that crazy, crazy week. Not only that, but my husband was such, such a saint. He was there with me every single day. He slept at the hospital with me every single night. He helped me use the restroom. He helped bathe me with like the washcloths um, while I was at the hospital because I couldn't actually shower. There was just so, so much that he did for me that I was unable to do for myself. And it was a very humbling experience because not only was he helping me do those things, but also other family members. So definitely a humbling experience, but it was also just such a blessing to have family and friends step up and just be there for us in those ways. That was basically kind of just the first half of my surgery experience. Of course, the days after surgery, as I recovered from home, it meant I was just taking things very slow. Um, I had very limited mobility, opening my arms, lifting them, raising them, um, just because I had, you know, part of my breast removed as well as a lymph node. Um, I had a lot of numbness, some pain associated with the surgery, but that was to be expected. It took a few weeks, and I would say even a month to a month and a half for me to finally be able to regain mobility. Now I have full range of motion. I do not have um, full sensation on the back right here. It's still numb. 
the surgeon said that, you know, because of the surgery and, you know, things, you know, they removed probably some parts of like muscle or tissue. I don't know exactly how the surgery works, but there are nerves that were disconnected. So it'll take time to hopefully regain full sensation. Maybe I won't ever get it back, who knows, but yeah. But at least I have full mobility, full range of motion, and I am happy to have that back. So that is the end of my story, my surgery recap, and make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. If you have any questions for me, drop them down below. Make sure to also follow me on Instagram. I post pretty periodically there, especially on days when I go to chemo and kind of just give updates. So if you want to stay in the loop, that's a great way to do so. Until next time.